Hello friends and fellow flute enthusiast and thanks for tuning in. Today's video is a response to many uh, emails and questions that I've gotten. Uh, we just added a new batch of the Ocarinafs, Ocarina and Native American flute put together. Um, and so with that came some questions from folks who have gotten this and even in the past as we've uh, sold these, there have been some questions around how do I play it, I can't get a good tone out of it, uh, what's wrong, is it me or is it the flute? And so I thought it would be best instead of typing all this out is to show you. Uh, that's really how I learn best is step by step. And so I want to talk a little bit about what this is and what this is not and then we'll move into how to get the best sound out of it and some differences between this and the native style flute. So um, I'm first going to play a little bit of this for you. I'm not going to use reverb in videos in the past. I've leaned on reverb, so you'll get to hear it exactly how it is in my room without any treatment. Um, and it is set up for a right-handed player. And what I mean by that is whatever your dominant hand is, typically that's the hand that goes on bottom. This is kind of the you know rule of thumb. However, there are people who break that, and uh, I have right-handed friends who play with left hand on bottom. So anyway, um, your right hand goes on the right, and it acts as the bottom hand with the three holes on the right side, playing right. And then the top two holes here play like the top two holes of regular native flute. So. As we go up the scale, we treat it just the same. We kind of draw a line here in our mind and say the right side is the bottom, the left side is the top. And that is as you're playing. It's opposite if you're looking at me here. So here we go. That same scale can be achieved in this flute. Okay, so the biggest question that I've gotten is, how do I get a good tone out of it? This is very different a mouth from a mouthpiece perspective than our native style flute. Native style flute, oftentimes, um, this is what we call kind of a nipple shape. There's also uh, rounded, there's flattened, there's lots of different styles of mouthpieces. Here's one that's tapered, okay? So just kind of tapers down a little bit, move so you can see that hopefully, okay? But the ocarina is very, very different. And there's a small, so this has a, a block or a totem or a fetish. It does not move, it is permanently fixated to the flute. Um, just because it is so small and compact. And so there's a little slit directly under here. There's no slow air chamber like what the native flute has. So this is really like, well, like a traditional ocarina or a whistle for that matter. So as you blow into it, the sound is right there. No slow air chamber to build back pressure or anything. So this tiny little slit can cause some issues for people to play this particular flute. And so what I'm going to show you is going to be kind of funny and a kind of weird, but if you have one of these at home, I want you to try to go along with me. So what I'm going to do is when I get ready to put the flute up to my uh, up to my face, up to my mouth, I'm going to purse my lips just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this into my mouth to flatten out my lips. So my lips will be, my top lip will be flattened around the block and my bottom lip around the bottom part of this flute. And so you want it to flatten out and you want to keep, uh, you're not going to, you're not going to purse your lips and keep them tense. You want to relax your lips around this. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to pull it up. You can see it's kind of squishing. It's kind of squishing into my face. Now, if my lips are in the way of the airstream, you might sound weaker. It, you may not even make any noise at all. So I'm too low on the flute. I need to move up. I'm 
going to come up a little closer just so you can kind of see. I know it's a little, little challenge uh, to look. It's all about the feel of this. There's a little angle here on the block. Um, there's a little groove here. I realize everyone's chin and lips are very different. So this is, I, I'm not going to say it's not as easy as one of these, um, but it definitely takes a little getting used to. Now, the other thing that I want to be very clear about the difference between this and this, one of the biggest benefits is this is the key of E, so is this. This is a very long flute, and for people who have arthritis or have trouble reaching, but they love those low tones, a vessel flute like the ocarina or the ocarina F is a great uh, substitute for that. So you can get those lower tones without having to stretch and reach as far. What you're going to sacrifice on this is um, you're not going to get upper register notes. You're not going to get anything above an octave on this. We might be able to push this to an octave note. Well, we get that out of the scale anyway. That's the highest note. No cross fingering, no overblowing. None of that is really going to push and get it into a second register. Largely just doesn't exist on a vessel flute like this. So this flute will get a little bit more range. This flute can be quieter in nature just because of the size of it. Um, and also the make of it. The voicing of this is a little different. It's a little more breathy, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, it just depends on the sound that you want, the sound that you're after, your preference. I've said this before. I've been playing flutes, and I've been recording with flutes, and I went to my go-to flute, and pitch-wise, it was fine. It was great, but voice-wise, it was too clean for the music I was working on. I needed something a little more breathy, gnarly, raw sounding and so i went beyond my preference and i opted for a very different flute could have even been one of these and so that's the biggest uh, difference between the ocarina and the native flute a lot of people love these because they're small but they're low so they're great for taking uh, backpacking and the technique that you do on these any of the finger movements um, are going to be transferable. So when you do things like pops or bends, anything like that. Any of those finger works are going to transfer very naturally. The breath work is a little different only because our mouth is being held in a different position. It's like this if you play different styles of flutes, you're realizing that your your tongue, your jaw, um, your cheeks, everything is in a different place depending on the flute that you're playing. And this is no different. You're going to be holding your mouth shape a little bit differently. And some of those breath techniques like barking, some of those more um, intense breath work that you're going to do on native flute may not apply, may not transfer as easily to an instrument like this. This is a little more delicate, and so we need to treat it um, not like, not through the lens of playing the native flute. So I hope that this has been helpful and insightful on getting the right angle here. Experiment with it. Don't worry about covering holes yet. Just hold the flute even here and keep wiggling it around. It's the same practice that I um, encourage those of you who are dabbling into rim-blown flutes. Uh, we don't wanna play too much, we wanna get the angle just right, and that's really what the trick is in getting a good sound out of these little ocarinas. So, hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about these, or if you have any tips perhaps that I didn't cover uh, that you would love to elaborate on or have me elaborate on, drop those in the comments below and um, just really appreciate your viewership. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so. It helps our channel get into that algorithm so we can attract more people who need this, ty this, this type of stuff in their lives. Thanks so much. We'll see you in another video soon.